Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, I'm Dr. Abid Ashar. I'm Associate Professor Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery in the Dent College of Dentistry at Fatima Memorial Hospital. Uh, today I'm going to talk about oral diseases and conditions uh, which uh, might be relevant uh, for your practice. Uh, next please. I'll be going through basically dental caries, dental decay, just the basic concept, what it is, what can be the sequel of the uh, disease. Then we'll be talking further about the periodontal disease. And uh, one very important aspect uh, which is uh, emerging now is that periodontal disease, which is the diseases of the gums. Now it is increasingly being shown that it is implicated or it worsens so many other diseases of the body, for example, diabetes mellitus, uh, even uh, ischemic heart diseases and other diseases. We'll be talking about it in a while. Additionally, we'll just be going, giving you tips for the good oral hygiene, I think, which is very important. And you being the primary healthcare provider, it's very important for you to know that. Additionally, again, we'll brief, uh, briefly be talking about oral cancer, how it initially presents, and the management of non-healing ulcers. And very briefly, we'll be talking about orofacial pain. Uh, likely causes and how to dispense with that. Next please. Just briefly to go through the uh, normal anatomy and you can see it's a tooth. It is in the mandibular or maxillary bone, alveolus. Uh, the top layer is called enamel which is the white layer which is visible in the mouth. Underneath that is dentine. This is a sensitive part of the tooth uh, and uh, when the decay of the tooth gets to the dentine one can start to feel pain. Again, we've got pulp, which is in the, uh, in the middle. Pulp contains all the uh, arteries and nerves and all the nutrients which are coming into the tooth. Uh, this is the area which is the periodontal membrane. This is the area where there are fibers which uh, support the uh, tooth into the alveolar bone. So it basically sort of uh, anchors the tooth into the bone. And then the cementum is the anchorage between the bone and the tooth itself. Next please. Uh, we start with dental plaque. Dental plaque is a biofilm which uh, develops over the tooth surface every time we brush within a matter of hours we have a dental plaque which develops over the tooth. What it consists of, you can see over here the dental plaque if it is not cleaned over a period of time it will continue to sort of increase in size and eventually becomes a calculus which is calcified plaque. It is basically diverse microbial community, predominantly bacterial. It is found on the tooth surface. It is embedded in a matrix of polymer of bacterial and salivary origin. So what happens is every time you brush our teeth, the saliva comes into the mouth, it forms a small layer in the mouth and we have got native microorganism bacteria which come and start to grow on this biofilm. Next please. Again, it con consists of multiple microorganisms, which you can see. Uh, next, please. The common uh, microorganisms which we come to see in the bacterial plaque are streptococcus, actinomycosis, actinomyces, anaerobic gram-positive rods, which includes uh, Neisseria, Villonella, and anaerobic gram-negative rods as well. One thing which, uh, just to mention, is that this is the sort of uh, various organisms, uh, their concentration at various areas. So effectively the dental caries is caused by different microorganisms which is streptococcus mutans whereas in case of periodontal or gum disease there are other organisms which uh, again gram positive and gram negative rods uh, predominate. Next please. Okay, carry on. Okay, caries is a Latin word for rot or rotten. So dental caries is a rotten tooth. And dental caries is effectively demineralization of the tooth surface which is caused by the bacteria. Next please. What happens is that we require a certain environment in, uh, which, which uh, sort of uh, facilitates development of the caries. We've got susceptible to surfaces. Those are the areas where teeth have not been cleaned properly or where it will catch up all the dental plaque or the sugar. Again, we need karyogenic bacteria and we need dietary fermentable carbohydrates, especially the sucrose. What happens is the bacteria ferment the sucrose. With the fermentation, there is acid production. And what acid production does is that it gradually demineralizes and dissolves the enamel surface. 
Okay, next sir, please. Now here we can see next. Here we can see this is a tooth surface which does not have any caries. Light to thoda sa band kar sakenge aap. Which does not have any caries. Okay, next. Again. Now here we can see this is a white spot. Now this is the first sign of demineralization. So the dental plaque has been deposited here because of the uh, fermentation of the sugar the acid production has started to dissolve the enamel which is one of the hardest rather which is the hardest tissue in the body okay next please now what happens is after a certain period this white area which is the surface demineralized it breaks down and it shows like a cavity small cavitation it causes a cavitation now when the cavitation happens what happens is there's an additional retentive area for sugar that additional retentive sugar would be fermented further and will cause further acid production and it's a vicious cycle which proceeds on now here further next please what we can see is the tooth has been filled however the filling has not been proper number one number two it has not been maintained properly by the patient and what has happened after that is that there's a decay around the filling so this was the primary caries and this is secondary caries which happens around the filled filling okay next please here we can see progressive demineralization next please eventually a broken down tooth next please now again going through the process of uh, uh, carious disease initially the demineralization starts a small cavity happens now increased sugar is there increased microorganisms are there increased acid production is there further dissolution of the calcified material happens it deepens it involves the dentin that is the time when it starts to become more sensitive one will start to feel like a hot and cold sensation further down it uh, sort of involves the uh, the whole of the dentin and finally gets to the pulp when it gets to the pulp that is the time when the patient gets acute pain and that is the acute pain state when the patient comes comes to you uh, this is again when there's acute pulpitis patient would actually complain of increased pain when they are actually sleeping or lying in the bed okay now with this pain with this infection it further sort of uh, this is a com closed compartment the pulp there's a necrosis of the pulp happens the whole of the pulp get necrotic so once it's a dead area this is a flourishing ground for the bacteria so bacteria invade this area and microorganisms grow over here now with the microorganisms growing they will uh, produce endotoxins and exotoxins which will go through the apex of the tooth from where the arteries and veins are coming and they will cause uh, further inflammation in the apical area or around the tooth and then the abscess can develop here we can see the surface of the tooth which has got like uh, pits and they, these are the areas which cause uh, which uh, uh, sort of retain the sugar and where most of the time the dental carry start additionally another thing which has to be remembered it is not just this surface the caries doesn't start between the teeth as well this is one important area where the caries happens next please now once caries has spread past the tooth into the bone it can spread into the upper jaw it can go into the eye area it can cause brain abscesses so it's very important that oral hygiene is maintained and address at the right time additionally we can see over here when it is a lower tooth it in, uh, spreads into the submandibular submental area next please and it can further spread into into the uh, neck and the submandibular submental and sublingual area causing the ludwig's angina ludwig's angina is a condition in which there's a cellulitis or you can say swelling inflammatory swelling of bilateral submental bilateral submandibular and bilateral sublingual spaces facial spaces and what it does because of this swelling the airway can be obstructed so it can become an emergency and a life-threatening condition additionally again the, uh, if it is not addressed at the right time it can further spread down the neck into the mediastinum and i've had cases who have had mediastinal abscesses because of a simple dental abscess which was not addressed at the right time next please having talked about that of course uh, those are the conditions which needs to be addressed by the dental practitioner but i'm sure you should have that basic knowledge 
for your own uh, perception and to guide the patients as well. Prevention is the better than cure. We all know that. Next please. Now, plaque and sugar, these are the two constituents which cause the dental decay to start. Now, we have saliva, which is which causes buffering. So, acid production which happens, it is buffered by saliva. Additionally, there's other sort of protective elements within the saliva which acts against the, uh, which protects the teeth from the uh, caries. Additionally, fluoride, which is produced in the saliva, number one. Number two, which is now all the toothpaste we have has got fluoride. And uh, again, the mouthwashes we do, they also have fluoride. They help in protecting the decalcification, number one. And again, fluoride along with the calcium, which again is in the toothpaste, the early white lesion of the decay can be remineralized. Agar plaque remove kar di jayegi, and we create a conducive environment with good fluoride, good, good calcium levels, those early calcify, early demineralization, early caries can become normal again. But once cavitation happens, when it's it broke, breaks down, it needs to be filled. Next, please. Now, the prevention, we have got certain several fluoride products, as I've already mentioned, the toothpaste, the mouthwashes. Dietary modification, that's very important because uh, we have to ensure that the sugar should not be taken all the time, especially the refined sugar, the chocolates, the children are eating all the time, number one. Number two, the bottle-fed uh, caries is one rampant caries. What happens in that is the children, the bottle uh, feeding when they are doing it, and especially if they take the milk bottle in the mouth and the milk with sugar and they sleep with the milk bottle, there's milk which also has got carbohydrates, there's sugar which is fermentable, which is in the mouth all the time and you will see children three, four, five years of age with all rotten caries. That is basically because of bottle fed caries because they're taking the bottle in their mouth and sleeping with that. So it's very important. I think that is one element which can be very vital. Uh, you can play a very effective role there. Again, pit and fissure sealants, the pits and fissures of the teeth. If a person has got lots of caries at early stages, we can put some small uh, filling material before the caries happen, it will seal it. Improved oral hygiene, regular brushing twice a day is very important and regular professional care. Now this is again a very neglected element in most of, for most of the people, even I mean most of the educated people I would say. Uh, in the West, they say dental checkup every six months. The reason for that is any problem which may be brewing can be addressed at an early stage. Now, what happens over here generally is that obviously one is not ignoring one tooth. The whole mouth is being uh, ignored and the disease is at a different level Maybe at one tooth it has gotten to the pain stage, but the other teeth are following very closely. So it needs to be addressed regularly. Small portion of people still get a high number of decayed teeth in spite of all these, but they need to be addressed. Next please. Okay, we've got done with the uh, decay. We'll come to the periodontal and gum disease, which is the most prevalent disease in the human race. Next please. 99% of the people, if not 100%, have some degree of gum disease, okay? It is a serious infection which, if left untreated, may lead to tooth loss, number one. The lose hona shuru jate As well as it can cause, it can contribute towards heart attack, stroke, diabetes, respiratory disease, and premature underweight babies in case of pregnant ladies. Next please. The question will be coming to that. Are you at risk? You know, there are simple signs which we all can note and it would suggest that if we are at risk or not. Next please. And those are there will be persistent, sore, swollen, red or bleeding gums. There might be tooth sensitivity or small dental pain. There will be bad breath. And when the disease, the gum disease gets advanced, the teeth will start to get loosened. Next please. 
The gum disease can be gingivitis or periodontitis. Gingivitis is the margins of the gums. Uh, next please. Okay, now here we can see this is the margin of the gums. When the infection starts the, with the plaque, it is the gingiva which gets inflamed. So we get gingivitis. Now, with initially the plaque deposits, then in due course of time, if the plaque is not removed, it becomes calcified and it gets attached to the roots. And what happens is because of the inflammation, uh, hypersensitivity element is there inflammation is there and because of all the exotoxins and endotoxins which are being released there is increased bone resorption bone loss this is the bone support which is being lost again this is lost between the roots of the teeth as well as between two teeth as well and this is called a periodontal pocket okay next please now this uh, diagram shows various stages this you can see is a healthy uh, bone, healthy uh, periodontium, good level of bone. You can see the bone is at near to the junction of the crown. There's a healthy uh, gums. Now initially it gets inflamed, it gets swollen. Next stage is the initial gingivitis. Not much of the bone loss has happened, but we can see the plaque deposits coming up in this area. Next what happens is the plaque deposits get deepened and the bone removal uh, the further bone loss is there bone re resorption is there and increasingly bone resorption is increased and you can see the plaque and the calculus all around the root surface again initially it is above the gums which can be cleaned later on it goes below the gums and it cannot be cleaned at home it needs to have a professional care next please now what happens is uh, initially uh, in case of gingivitis there will be minimal bleeding when we slightly probe again similar thing happens when you brush your teeth there will be bleeding from the gingival margin the greater the bleeding the more severe will be the gingivitis and inflammation of the gingiva next please again here we can see there are certain conditions uh, where there are hormonal changes which can induce gingivitis for example puberty associated gingivitis we can see grossly swollen inflamed gingiva in case of puberty again this would not happen if the plaque deposits are not there so important thing is we keep it clean so those uh, you can say factors which may actually promote gingivitis would not uh, cannot promote it because the plaque is the initiating factor is not there similarly in case of pregnancy associated pyogenic granuloma you can see apelis localized area it uh, bleeds heavily in pregnant ladies again uh, we need to just continue to keep it nice and clean and at times it will just uh, regress after the pregnancy and again another puberty associated gingivitis we can see over here next please again here we can see drug influenced gingival hyperplasia cyclosporin induced immune modulator we can see excessive erythematous inflamed enlarged hypertrophic gingiva again the same thing applies those patients who are taking increasingly cyclosporin with the renal transplants etc if the plaque deposits are cleared away this will not happen so the important thing is it has to be cleaned up now if it happens and it is not treated at an early stage the plaque is not taken away cleaned out what would happen initially it is inflammatory later on it becomes fibrotic then only surgery will remove it okay next please yes phenytoin sodium also causes again nifedipine your antihypertensive that also causes uh, gingival hyperplasia okay again this is a picture uh, chronic periodontitis just to show i mean here you can see the bone levels of the teeth on the left side they're quite good now this is the left side the patient is a right hander and he's cleaning across the face this area little better however if you see on the right side there's hardly any part of the tooth is in the bone now the whole bone is being lost in this tooth okay he's already lost these teeth so i mean this shows advanced periodontitis again anterior lower anterior teeth upper anterior teeth you can see hardly just the tips are in the bone so it's very important that we direct the patients in the right direction 
and again i mean i think you people can play a very important role in giving them oral hygiene instructions or maybe just to put a chart there just to encourage them etc next please okay treatment is improved oral hygiene brushing the teeth twice a day very important with fluoride brushes uh, again when there's a gingivitis bleeding gums increased uh, periodontal disease professional treatment is required and it ranges from simple scaling in case of simple uh, small plaque area gingivitis to advanced surgeries including bone grafting when the bone is lost or guided tissue regeneration these are advanced techniques next please just to go through a normal preventive brushing uh, technique we can what we have to do is we have to place our brush at a 45 degree angle half sort of a few bristles on the gingiva and then we you can see over here and then we press the teeth in now what would happen is this bristles will go between the teeth number one and between the gums margins and the teeth and what after that is needs to be done is that we need to sort of rotate the brush in small circular movements you can say at one area we make like five to seven movements then we come forward overlap the area do the same thing again and we start from one side maybe from inside of the surface uh, the jaw uh, of the teeth all the inside again from the outside now inside the upper teeth what we can do is put the brush straight and start to brush like this similarly in the lower teeth as well okay and then we next please we go around all the mouth finally we have to brush the chewing surface in the pits grooves there might be some uh, sugar etc it takes two minutes to get basically minimum of two minutes to brush properly and i can challenge you most of the people you time it how long you brush normally it will not be more than 25 to 30 seconds just a message for you okay for your own good okay next please okay now this is an important aspect and with the point was raised uh, i have uh, passed on a i think a paper uh, certainly it would help but it's not very palatable and again the toothpaste has got fluoride and calcium number one and again the lubrication it provides khali brush karenge say actually you can thoda sa soreness bhi cause kar sakte hain theek hai to important calcium and fluoride would help as well okay now periodontal diseases and systemic diseases now hame hazur sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam one of the last acts of his life was maswak karna what is maswak mere badi argument hoti hai logon se maswak is lakdi marna ya daant saaf karna to me it is proper cleaning of the teeth not using the stick at that time that was the best mean available theek hai now we have certainly maswak hum log kar sakte hain because again maswak agar sahi tarike se ki jaye it is useful but maswak sahi tarike se karna is very difficult because it's a straight thing you cannot have an access piche ke daanton mein aapke access hona bada mushkil ho jati hai lekin that was the best option available at the time uh, again hazur ki hadith hai ke 99 bimariyon ka ilaj hai and we are now getting to this it is being proven more and more diseases are coming up systemic diseases which are being influenced because of the gum disease next please and what's the connection teeth are directly connected to our blood stream same as our gums and what happens to them would happen to the whole body we can see there's a decay and there's a broken heart here next please very important increasingly the dentists need to know more about systemic diseases similarly the physicians also need to know more about the oral diseases i was uh, in hungary 
uh, for about one month uh, in one of the medical schools there in the maxillofacial surgery department and I was pleasantly surprised to see that in their medical curriculum they've got a two weeks rotation into the dental school for every medical graduate so you can imagine going just going through the departments you will have so much knowledge for yourself forget about anybody else okay again US figures are that 10 to 15 percent of US adults have severe periodontal disease and I think we can easily double if not triple the incidence in our country okay now moderate to severe periodontitis we have already talked about periodontitis this may pockets banti hai bone resorption ho rahi hai microorganisms hai which are directly in relation to the to the live tissue and effectively feeding into the body uh, circulation now in case of moderate to severe periodontitis with at least 28 teeth present there is 72 centimeter square pocket epithelium which is this size now if imagine current ke ye size of infection it is the whole palm of infection which is there with us 24 hours a day inflammatory inflammation ho rahi hai inflammatory uh, exotoxins, uh, exotoxins hai, endotoxins hai unke effects will be coming down to them a little aage chaliye so what happens is the periodontal bacteria, number one and the toxins both exo and endotoxins they travel into the bloodstream travel to major organisms they can actually start infections we all know subacute bacterial endocarditis okay that is one thing which can be caused by a dental infection again major reason of sub and acute bacterial endocarditis is bad oral hygiene not treatment by the dentist every time we brush our teeth if we have got uh, periodontitis and bad oral hygiene we cause 60 to 70 percent bacteremia okay or filling may 20 to 30 percent bacteremia hota hai. so you can see the difference so important hai ke hygiene is maintained okay next please now people with periodontal disease are at a higher risk for developing heart diseases stroke cvas uncontrolled diabetes preterm low birth deliveries and respiratory diseases next please again toxins enter the blood they trigger the liver c reactive proteins are produced the normal inflammatory process and they inflame the arteries what happens inflammation of arteries atheromas atherosclerosis and which will cause heart attacks cvas it's a vicious cycle you know it's a direct and a very simple connection next please again in case of diabetes mellitus we have got insulin dependent diabetes mellitus and non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus they both uncontrolled are a risk factor for periodontal disease if it is uncontrolled diabetes be it insulin dependent or non-insulin dependent there will be higher incidence of periodontal disease because they will be more prone to infection inflammation there will progression of the disease will be faster and tooth loss is higher in poorly controlled diabetic patients next please now that was effect of diabetes on the oral health now we are talking about effects of the periodontal disease on diabetes the hypothesis is that the bacterial infection releases hormones that increases the glucose level number one number two the inflammatory mediators like tumor necrosing factor alpha interleukin 1 beta they induce cell resistance to insulin so both these factors would actually make the blood sugar control more difficult next please now again with various researches it has been proven that periodontal treat treatment actually may improve the metabolic control of the disease the hi hyperglycemia uncontrolled diabetic the blood sugar will actually be improved with the periodontal treatment this has been given by again 60s 92 96 97 and again more recently 
Severe periodontitis has been associated with a six-fold increased risk of poor glycemic control. So, I mean, patients coming to you with diabetes, they're coming all the time. If they have periodontal control, good oral hygiene, you can imagine how much inflammation is reduced and how much uh, blood sugar can be controlled. Next, please. Again, similarly, periodontal disease as a risk factor for systemic conditions. We have got cardiovascular disease. We've got pregnancy. Next, please. Increased risk for atherosclerosis, thromboembolism, we've already talked about it. Men with periodontitis is 25% more likely to develop coronary heart diseases. Again, this has been uh, proven as well. Next, please. In case of pregnancy, periodontal diseases, patients who have got, pregnant ladies who have got bad oral hygiene, they are seven times, seven times more likely to deliver a preterm low birth weight baby. Next, please. If we see the figure, there's a multivariant logistic regression model for all preterm low birth weight mothers. Periodontitis is way above all other possible contributing factors. Next, please. The important thing is leaving dental checkups until pain occurs can result in expensive treatment again more advanced breed disease such as root treatment or can damage the tooth to such an extent where removing the tooth is the only option. So the important thing is that we should all have regular checkups so that disease if it is there can be addressed at an early stage for ourselves, for our family and for our patients. Next. Regular West Bay Academy 6 monthly checkup. Either we look at at least once a year. But important is that we should come to a normal level ourselves. An optimal Joby disease has to control kar le, our habits should develop and then we maintain it. Next, please. Okay, now we'll go into uh, some vesicular bullous lesions, ulcers. Next, quickly. Next. Ulcer, next. It's a loss of epithelium which extends below the basement layer. Again, we can see over here in aphthous ulcers. Next, please. Vesical is next. A circumscribed fluid filled skin elevated less than one centimeter in diameter. It's a vesicular bullous lesion. We can see a vesicular hair. Next, please. We can see a vesicle hair. Next, please. Next, please. Bulla is a fluid filled again greater than one centimeter in diameter. Next, please. We can see a bulla hair. Next, please. Uh, again, ulcers can be classified in various, minute, various uh, uh, ways. We've got they can present as acute multiple oral ulcers. These include mostly uh, viral ulcers, herpes virus, Coxsackie virus, varicella zoster virus. These are oral ulcers. Or immune complexes, autoimmune disease like erythema multi, uh, immune complexes, erythema multiforme, which can be as a result of various drugs we give. Allergic stomatitis. It can be secondary to chemotherapy or acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Next, please. Or we can have recurring oral ulcers, the most common being recurrent after stomatitis, Bessette's disease, recurrent herpes simplex, again, is another condition which can recur. Chronic multiple lesions, the red ones are those which we'll be just briefly touching upon. Chronic multiple lesions can be pamphigous, uh, bullous pamphigoid, mucous membrane pamphigoid. Uh, erosive uh, lichen planus and herpes simplex virus in immune compromised patients. Next please. Or single ulcers can be traumatic oral cancer or fungal infections like histoplasmosis, blastomycosis and mucormycosis. Next please. Aphthous ulcers are the most common of the oral mucosal lesions of unknown etiology. They can be one to several discrete, shallow, painful ulcers which are visible on the unattached mucous membranes. Next please. They can be of three forms, minor, major, and herpetiform. Next, please. In case of minor, we can have one to five ulcers on non-characterized or non-attached. Non-attached uh, oral mucosa means that the bone se adherent mucosa nahi hai. Thik? Another thing which I would just like to convey here, which unfortunately happens, that for general medical doctors, the body starts from pharynx. Am I right? From pharynx. What we do is 
open your mouth, tongue depressor, ignore anything in between. Am I right or wrong? Do you agree? I think just five seconds of quick look how the mouth is. You can just tell the patient, I think that you will do such big favor to the patient. Okay, ek uh, jaye. Okay, this was uh, mucosal, this is a minor ulcer. Minor ulcers are one to five in number, small in size. They last for one to two weeks and they would sort of heal on their own. Next please. Major ulcers are more than one centimeter. Uh, they are mostly in the soft palate area. They heal with scarring and when those patients, uh, when they are having it, uh, increased scarring can cause problems with speech can cause problems with swallowing and so many other things. Next please. Or we can have, next please. Herpetiform ulcers, which are multiple, like at times, hundreds of ulcers can be in the mouth. You can see small, small, small ulcers, less than two to three millimeters, small ulcers all over in the mouth. They're called herpetiform ulcers. They're all part of all kinds of herpes uh, ulcers. Next please. Minor ulcers typically last one to two weeks. Major ulcers may last several weeks to months, usually self-limiting in some individuals. It may actually be continuous. Most of the time, these minor ulcers would actually heal on their own. But in some, ulcers, some individuals, they run in cycles. And the cycle at times, ek heal ho jata, dusi jaga pe ulcer shuru ho jata, which can be very troublesome for the patient. The precise cause remain unclear. It's idiopathic. Again, it is considered to be a multifactorial and it is considered that it is, there is a likely immune mediated destruction. Next please. The differential diagnosis, again secondary oral herpes, recurrent, pemphigus vulgaris, mucous membrane pemphigoid, neutropenia. Again, there was one patient which uh, came to me like uh, two weeks back. That patient was being treated for simple similar ulcers for like two to three years without much difference if she had Pemphigus vulgaris. All it required was a small biopsy and we had the result. Next please. Again, important thing, recurrent ulcers. We should have CBC with red blood cell morphology. Uh, it would show us whether it's a microcytic, hyperchromic, megaloblastic. In case of megaloblastic, we have B12 folate deficiencies. In case of uh, 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 hypochromic microcytic is it is iron deficiency and those are one of the important factors which may actually be contributing towards the after ulcers. Again ESR may show some uh, chronic infections. Again if there is an indication uh, with this uh, RBC morphology we may we can proceed on to do serum iron ferritin uh, folate and vitamin B12 levels and then or at times, uh, if iron deficiency, I mean, nazar aajati hai, we can take care of that. Again, folate, again, these tests are expensive tests. But folic acid as tablets is available and it's quite cheap as well. You can always give the patient on a trial basis one daily uh, for a month and you will see if he's having a cycle or not. Next, please. Again, the treatment for this in mild conditions, we have bland mouth rinses, which is uh, sufficient. Or enzyclor mouthwash is uh, sort of numbs up the oral gum, oral mucosa, which is useful in case of enzyclor mouthwash. Moderate cases mean topical therapy karte hai. It's lignogen based gel, bongella or somo gel. What it does is ke, uh, it numbs up the area so it is less painful. Especially you can ask the patient to apply bongella like 10 minutes before the meals. So they'll be more comfortable with their meals. Again, Canalog in Aura base, it's uh, triamcinolone in Aura base, and uh, it's a steroid based uh, cream which can be applied in the mouth and it gets, so it's got an adhesiveness into the oral mucosa and it uh, helps heal the ulcer much quicker. Normally, it will take one week to 10 days, with this, it may heal like th uh, four to five days. Again, in case of severe cases, we, we use topical corticosteroids, systemic steroids like prednisolone and at times because of the uh, overlying infection, we may require antibiotics. But important thing is for routine after ulcers, we do not need antibiotics. In case of major ulcers or severe cases, please refer. Next please. Now, the more common oral ulcers 
because of viruses can be because of herpes simplex varicella zoster coxsackie virus again this is not that common i will not go into the greater detail we're talking sim uh, a little bit about herpes simplex and varicella zoster next please now in herpes vi virus both in case of herpes zo simplex and uh, uh, varicella zoster they've got these unique biological properties one is called neurovirulence next is latency and the third is reactivation they have the capacity to invade and replicate in the nervous system okay, they go and invade the nervous system they've got latency they go in there in the nerve cell ganglia and they sleep there and if there is some stimulus like fever trauma emotional stress sunlight menstruation etc they wake up again and they reactivate and their virus shows up again clinically next please we have in case of herpes simplex acute herpetic gingivostomatitis which is the primary infection and common cold sores which is a secondary infection in case of varicella zoster we have got chicken pox which is the primary herpes zoster or shingles is a secondary next please Acute herpetic gingivostomatitis is in children aged 6 months or to 5 years. Again, infected saliva, say, when passes on, again, incubation. Again, lots of time there has been some degree of infection, exposure, which clinically we may not be evident. But the patient has a secondary herpes labialis with no history of primary infection so subclinical infection probably had happened earlier next please again uh, gingivitis is the most striking feature in case of acute herpetic gingivostomatitis very important next please next again we will have vesicular lesions all over the mouth lymphadenopathy would be there next next please Again, because the saliva dribbles over the lip and we can have lesions on the lips and the skin around that. Next. Again, similar, another uh, picture of uh, acute herpetic genital stomatitis. Next. Again, the differential diagnosis would be after stomatitis, chicken pox, eczema multiforme, hand, foot and mouth disease, herpes zoster. Next, please. The treatment is antiviral therapy, supportive therapy and oral discomfort management next please now very important antiviral therapy probably you people are the best place people to address this because if antiviral therapy is to be effective it has to be started within 48 hours of the rash onset more than that it is ineffective then it will take its own due course of time Again, patients who are on acyclovir will experience less pain and faster resolution of the cutaneous lesions. The dose is Zovirax, uh, 200 mg, 5 times a day for 5 days. Next, please. Again, what antiviral therapy does is it shortens the clinical course, prevents the complications like the secondary disease, the, uh, the uh, latent neurovirulence and latency. Uh, that is prevented. Next, please. Supportive therapy may again pain hai, analgesics denge, hydration denge, again uh, mein at times it can be a big problem because the ulcers they cannot eat and they cannot drink, they may become dehydrated, they may need to be given IV fluids, again immunocompromised patient agar hai, HIV patients are hai, unke liye more ag uh, aggressive treatment, next please. Uh, oral discomfort liye bongella ya per benzodiazepine mouth washes, uh, enzyclor or dichlorine hydrochloride mouthwash. Again, another which is very effective is a solution is made of Benadryl 5 mg per mil along with a diphenhydramine, is basically anti allergic, mixed with equal amount of milk of magnesia and ask the patient to do a mouth rinses of that. It's very helpful. Mouth rinses solution of Benadryl 5 mg per mil aapki, mixed with equal, equal amount of milk of magnesia isko mix karke you do ask the patient to do a mouth rinse ek chamach uska ek chamach uska equal amount and karke achhe tarike se swish it around the mouth 
spit it out. Anti, uh, it, it, local, uh, local comfort ke liye. Next please. Recurrent herpes simplex virus again. Uh, it's herpes labialis. There will be prodrome, yani ke before the vesicles come up, there will be pain, there will be burning, there will be tingling. Again, arrhythmatic papules develop. Ho jate hai. Again, there are tiny, thin walled inter, uh, uh, vesicles hote hai, jo ke baad mein ulcerate kar jate. Next, please. The recurrence is triggered by recognizable stimuli. Immune, immune levels low hai, to recurrence aa jate hai. Uh, exam time mein students ke, they will start to have these uh, lesions, secondary uh, uh, lesions like herpes labialis. Next, please. You can see herpes labialis here. Next, please. Again, another herpes, uh, uh, recurrent herpes here as well. Next, please. Again, acyclovir cream, 5%. Zaclovir ke naam se aati hai. Zovirax ke naam se aati hai. If this is applied in the prodromal stage in the area of burning, before the vesicles come up, it may prevent, it will prevent the, uh, the, the lesion to come up and will resolve the burning sensation will gradually sort of taper off. Next please. Herpes zosters, shingles, next please. Again, uh, herp chicken pox, baut marta mein nazar aajata hai. Kai marta ba, sub clinical exposure hota hai. Or initial infection of chicken pox hai. Again, what it does is, it's, it has a neurovirulence or ja ke latency karke so gai. And then reactivates when either at old age or when the Immuni immune immunity is low. Next please. It is again we can see over here it's a self-limiting painful rash in the supply of a dermatome. We know spinal dermatomes in case of facial dermatome we have got mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve, maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve and the frontal division of the tri uh, trigeminal nerve, ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. Usme again important thing is uh, in case if it is frontal ke keratitis, conjunctivitis etc. Et it has to be addressed. Uh, again this will again take its own course. Next please. Herpes zoster shingles may it is treated aggressively with acyclovir which is Zovirax which give we give like 200 milligrams in case of acute herpetic gingival stomatitis. Here we give 800 milligrams five times a day for 10 days. The reason is to prevent post herpetic neuralgia. And post herpetic neuralgia once it sets in it can last at times for years or at times for lifetime and can be very crippling. Next please. Diagnosis of Volcan. Next please. Okay, we have got precancerous lesion, leukoplakia, atheroplakia, or precancerous conditions like oral submucous fibrosis, pan ki wajah se hai, erosive lichen planus, etc. Next, please. Here we can see there's a lesion, leukoplakia here. Again, uh, there are uh, smoking hai, alcohol hai, these are predisposing factors, they have to be excluded. Agar ye nahi ho ra, they need regular monitoring by the right person because this could well be cancer at this stage even. Okay? Again, oral submucous fibrosis because of the pan, betel nut chewing ki wajah se ho jata hai, increased hardening ho jati hai of the uh, submucous fibrosis hota hai, submucous fibrosis ki wajah se mouth uh, opening limited ho jati hai and again there is a very high malignant transformation in such patients. Again, one the factors which may affect is, ek to ye ki immediately early stage pe pan, betel nut, chalia, pan prag, all these things should be quitted, stopped, number one. Number two, the deficiency states like iron deficiency, anemia, they can actually make a very significant contribution. So it's very important that we check out if there's any iron.